hundreds of people were brought to this building because there was no hope for them. People lived their entire lives in these buildings. You know, the phrase, if these walls could talk, mm -hmm. yeah, they want to talk. They felt like it might have to do with uh, some kind of ritual magic that someone had done there in the past. They were all over the place. I've never mm -hmm. seen anything like that. We didn't know what they were. We didn't know if they meant anything at all. So they were on the windowsill here window and sills. there. My eyes were drawn to this object hanging on the wall. That is a wooden leg. It sounded like someone who couldn't walk mm -hmm. and that they were like dragging themselves. Did anything happen if you touch it? Were you like, would it, does it change your? There's something to do with the carnival. And we're both like, Chip, stop it. I'm like, I'm gonna scare the out of them. 100%. Like, the light came on. I'm Adam Berry. And I'm Amy Bruni. And this is Kindred Spirits Inside the Investigation. So this is the Randolph County Infirmary in Winchester, Indiana. Hundreds of people were brought to this building because there was no hope for them. They had no money, they had nowhere to go. Right. Some of them were sick, some of them were elderly. Yeah. And so they would kind of just live out their years in the infirmary. And it was interesting because we don't we don't have those anymore. And it was people from all walks of life, some very unusual, and I just I think we we were just very drawn to that. You know, the phrase, if these walls could talk, mm -hmm. yeah, they want to talk. Dan is a cool dude, y'all. He loves the history of the building. That is his first and foremost thing. Because this building was a staple of the community. I mean, people lived their entire lives in these buildings. We have hundreds of possibilities as far as who could be haunting the place. Right. And it's just, we're going to have to figure out, like, yeah. who's causing the more dark, scary activity. They had uh, activity that was getting more uh, kind of aggressive, and they felt like it might have to do with uh, some kind of ritual magic that someone had done there in the past. And so that was something we'd never dealt with before. So we were like, sign us up. We have the women's bathroom where they found some symbols. So at some point, someone went into the infirmary and painted a bunch of sigils all over the space. And so these are symbols used in ritual magic for a number of things. They're all over the place. I've never mm -hmm. seen anything like that. Dan felt that those symbols had something to do with changing the energy in the infirmary. It was very plausible that that was responsible for the uptick in activity. I think the coolest experience, I mean, coming from a ghost hunter, come on, the coolest, I mean, frightening, terrifying, was when Dan was in the basement and that apparition sort of rushed at him. And they walk up real quick. I'm sorry, they're gonna hit me right in the back. I just went to knock them off their feet like that, and the person was gone. Not only did he get a visual of the person, but he felt threatened enough where he was physically gonna, like, attack. If that were to continue to happen or to happen more frequently, then you have to worry about people visiting your space. Can you just kind of take me through just what happened exactly the night that kind of scared you? There were some people that were working in the, the building and they brought their kids with them. So the kids were all kind of snuggled up in the front room area watching a movie. And they had this terrifying experience. And it felt like heavy footsteps walking towards the door. Okay. Like he was kind of having a struggle and then something started messing with the door handle. I think for Dan, that was a turning point because he wants kids to feel safe visiting because it, it has such a historical significance. He wants to be able to share that. So they were on the windowsill here window and sills, there. doors. Door there frames, were... windowsills. We knew we were a little out of our element with the sigil situation. We didn't know what they were. We didn't know if they meant anything at all. We knew who to call in to help us with that issue, and that was Greg and Dana. Whoever's putting these symbols on the building is putting their specific intention into the building. Whoever's here that's not living, they don't get a choice. Greg and Dana Newkirk are friends of ours. They run and operate the Museum of the Occult. They are also experts in magic. With Ritual a, magic. Yes, with a K. I could see why just that kind of disturbance would cause an uptick mm -hmm. in activity. I remember the second we walked into the infirmary, my eyes were drawn to this object hanging on the wall in the entryway. That is a wooden leg. Oh. oh. Okay. And it's original. It's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. As I was interviewing Brooklyn, she said it sounded like someone who couldn't walk mm -hmm. 
and that they were like dragging themselves. And that leg was literally mounted right next to where she was hearing these sounds from. We definitely explored that option with the leg. Can I get you to read on one thing upstairs? Okay. Do you get anything from these items here? Peg leg. Chip sometimes is a magnet for ghosts and for spirits. And we're investigating with him and we're trying to figure out if the leg has anything to do with anything. Does anything happen if you touch it? But you like, would it, does it change your... There's something to do with the carnival. And we're both like, Chip, stop it. Because he's picking up on this guy named Harry Dunn who was living at the uh, infirmary. Harry Peg Dunn. His name was Peg. Peg leg. So he worked for a carnival, and he would basically go out for the carnival season, travel with the carnival, and then come back to the infirmary when carnivals weren't happening. Mr. Dunn, are you here with us? Can you let us know in some way? I already got an answer for you if you want the answer. He's totally responsible, 100%. Really? Yes, and he did it just for funsies. He picks up on, like, I didn't mean to scare them. I was just, uh, you know, it was just his nature, like, playing. It just is a fun thing to do. I'm like, I'm going to scare the out of them. 100%. Like, the light came on. We had all of those kind of ducks in a row. We had the leg, obviously. We had Chip basically say Harry's name around the leg. And then we had, like, the experience itself of someone walking, and it sounded like they were on a, a peg leg. So I yeah. think all signs point to Harry Dunn. We don't think that you have anything to worry about as far as that incident. It was a joke. It yeah, was a joke. It was funny. Yeah. Absolutely. I put their minds at ease that there was this more playful spirit, not something trying to harm the girls. Yeah. Greg and Dana are coming back here today. Oh, and. Good. We just want to go through and just properly close off all those sigils. Dana especially is very good at teaching others how to use ritual magic and the reasons behind it. I made you a blend that is basically all purpose cleansers to renew the building and restore it back to the, the energy level that it was before the symbols were put here and literally just wiping them away. I mean, I think we left the infirmary with a lot of answers mm -hmm. and kind of given Dan the uh, advice and tools going forward on how to handle the space. But overall, they're very positive there. They're so focused on keeping the history alive and remembering who their ghosts are that I think they're in a really good spot. Thanks for watching. And for more Kindred Spirits content, head to Travel Channel Go.